Hi guys, welcome back to an analysis of a video made in Speaker's Corner with our favorite hijabi, the Muhammad. And this time, it's not a video on science or philosophy or something. No, it's a political video. And again, there are multiple cuts, which sort of raises my suspicion due to... Remember when he left out talking to the guy where he failed to hand over the £10 he promised him? There, he also left out most of the embarrassing things. Well, but the video is also available under different names on other channels. So maybe Hijab has learned not to censor his stuff because it gets even more embarrassing then. Now, in this video, he starts off with people making a misappropriation. A misappropriation that a lot of people make in terms of understanding Islam. Really? Stealing words or information conveyed by words? It looks like the hijab still uses words he doesn't understand. I mean, all right, it's not a big deal. But it sets the tone and dampens the level of expectation somewhat. And I reckon he's looking for misconceptions people have in terms of understanding Islam. Didn't he claim somewhere that he's a teacher? I hope this is fake news. It's when they put on their secular glasses or their liberal glasses or the demographic glasses. You simply can't keep a good man down. Demographic glasses, no less. Or is it democratic? <laughs> Okay, it's a huge blunder anyway, okay, since this, the Quran and thus Islam, is claimed to be the perfect product of a perfect God, no matter through which man-made glasses you look at it, I would imagine. Now, in the meantime, in the real world, one plus one is always two. No matter what glasses you're wearing and speed on earth here, yeah, you know, it's, it's always the result of dividing distance by time, no matter who does the calculations. Islam, however, seems to vary depending on the individual observers. But praise where praise is due, he compares Islam to political concepts without trying to hide the mainly political aspect of Islam, the way that most Muslim apologists do. Also, he freely admits that when using an objective rationale... If you do that, Islam will not measure up. So taking a critical or objective look at Islam will make it fail and fade into oblivion. You must be deluded to appreciate Islam. You must be gullible and impressionable. You must leave reality behind to accept the tenets of Islam. Really? It does not measure up to reality. Now, somehow here there's a voice of a woman that, that can be heard, sort of, in the background. But this video is about hijab and is a monologue. Hijab preaching, loving himself and only himself, not allowing anyone else in here. The ruler of the West, and this is a post-colonial narrative, yeah? Blah, 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 rulers of the West, blah, blah, post-colonial. I mean, oh, please. The overused stereotypes where Islam should be able to exist without being dependent of rulers of the West in any colonies. And, by the way, I mean, just for your information, I mean, Islam originally starting in Arabia today holds 56 colonies. Today, all right? And they're working on number 57. Today. Not in the past sometime. Now it's secularism, now it's liberalism, now it's democracy. Does he really think secularism, liberalism and democracy are alternatives to each other and to Islam? Why, why does he list these in one sentence? What exactly do they have to do with each other? Does, doesn't he know what contents these words actually convey? Because somehow I'm afraid he does not. To what extent can we say that these ideologies are objective truths? He's completely off his rocker here. And I think he needs to sit down and have a calm conversation with someone who can teach him some basics about reality today in politics. What is he talking about? As long as we use subjective language and avoid truisms, there is no such thing as objective truth or absolute truth. And there is no association between truth and an object, as in ideology. Communism is not true, and neither is Islam. And secularity is simply, I don't know, what is separated from religion. And that's not an ideology in itself. It's, there's no possibility of truth being associated with a secular society. 
it's just a description. There's nothing. I don't understand where he gets this from. The entire concept here, this this entire foundation of his is completely false and useless. I I know he's trying to score points for Islam here, but this fails miserably when applied in this form. The theologies of the philosophers that originally initiated them in intend for them to be seen as objective truths. What? What is he talking about? Liberalism? Yes, that is an ideology. But democracy, I, I don't know, this is just a way of organizing something, a method. You know, it's, it's just a, a matter of processes. So you can get a liberal democracy or a social democracy. Just as secular is not an ideology, but it's a way to organize the concept of how we should coexist. I think he's totally confused here. For example, the idea of liberalism, which was refined by like John Stuart Mill. You could say re liberalism side with Thomas Hobbes. You could argue that with the Leviathan and continued up into J.S. Mill. Okay, now, now he starts chucking out names. Why? What does that help his case? John Stuart Mill was a brilliant person who refined the scientific methodology and insisted on empirical verification and women's political equality. So why mention him? What is the point? Now, here's what I consider the highlight of his speech. If you accept that premise, you accept incest, for what? example. You accept it. What is he talking about? If you accept a liberal attitude, you must also accept incest? <laughs> Not really. I mean, it's total bullshit. Now, first off, there's no manifest or doctrine for all liberals, okay? Second, incest is accepted in Islam. So what's he on about? Genital mutilation and raping sex slaves is okay, but a boy fondling his sister's breast, that's where we need to draw the line? Does this guy have no shame? Is this what Islam does to a human brain? And again, like I've said a million times, I neither condone incest nor do I think everybody should have a go. But incest, as in domestic intimacy, should not be the subject to laws as long as it's consensual and without consequences, you know, like offspring. How can I make this any clearer? What our little hero does not seem to grasp is that liberalism, freedom enacted by a government, and libertarianism, freedom without a government or without input from governments, are two very different things. He constantly falls back on the only thing he seems to be able to understand, what he calls objective truth or absolute truth, and proof. Well, not understanding either. Not at all. It's actually quite sad if you think about it. His, his mind is so unbelievably limited, centered only around these two things, this, this certainty thing. And then he gets them wrong on top of it because there is no such thing as objective truth and no proof here in the real world either. Now, Islam is a political ideology and a set of ideas arranged around a, I cannot find any other words, but it's a despotic, totalitarian leader who is imaginary. It is not a claim which can be true or false. In Islam, you get claims, sure, but these are either unverifiable or false but not the entire construct. I've only watched a couple of videos with this guy, hijab, Muhammad hijab, and they were all on different topics. And every single time he managed to look like a, you know, like a childish fool and his followers love him for it. Why? So if we, if we can't prove that that's something which is absolutely or objectively true, then measuring Islam according to it is like measuring something with a stretched ruler. Oh, and is what he calls a stretchy ruler a ruler at all? I mean, okay, I understand what he's trying to do, but he fails miserably because he does not even understand what exactly he's talking about, and he messes everything up. If I were live at Speaker's Corner, I would be laughing non-stop. But here, it's, it's, you know, when I think about it, when sitting down and relaxing, it's where I feel more sad than actually comical. Look, a hundred years, which is like one generation, has completely shaped the way we think about women's rights in society. hundred years, one hundred years. He really knows how to put his foot in it, doesn't he? A hundred years? Okay, this is a photo of five generations in this one photo. Does that mean it's taken over 500 years in one photo? Oh, yeah. Hijab laments the fact that women were not allowed to vote in the UK a hundred years ago. 
But then neither could all men vote. But why go into the past? Why not compare what we have today to what we have in Islam today? Can a man living in the UK today legally marry four women? No. Can a man legally beat his wife? No. Can a man legally keep sex slaves? No. And so on and on. When will Islam allow legal equality in all aspects for men and women? When, Mr. Hijab? Islam has had over a thousand years to think about this. So when, Mr. Hijab? When? In 1967, in this country, it was illegal to be homosexual. There was a death penalty in this country. Another one of his blunders, as far as I'm concerned, he seems to bump into some event associated with the date and then he muddles everything up in his brain so it comes out as nonsense. Now, the Guardian here outlines what happened, when and to what extent. And that's not too difficult. Just a few milestones and facts. So why can't he job get his, get, and there's just a few things, get this into his head instead of spewing nonsense. And all this act did was to make it look more like Islam, actually, where anal sex in private is not really punishable. It's not a not an offense for some Muslims. And when will Islam allow equal rights for homosexuals? When, Mr. Hijab? Then how are you sure that in 2057 uh, or, 2000, or 2100, yeah, that we're not going to have a new set of morals. Now, I can't be sure, but I sincerely hope that things will change and the morality will represent society of that time in era, even in 2100, and not what an immoral camel herder did a thousand years ago. And we finally, now we get to where he wants to go, the primitive apologetics. That's where he's at home. And he admits Islam is not a benefit for the people, but for their God. The liberal thesis... It prioritizes the human being over and above everything else, right? The Islamic thesis prioritizes Allah over above everything else. It's completely different. And now, as he gets more desperate and gets totally lost, he goes off on his, you know, this usual set of claims, his usual set of lies, usually starting with, let me tell you something interesting or here's something interesting. Ah, not really. Uh, do you know, it's really interesting. Islam and the Quran has a method of falsification. No, Islam does not have a method of falsification. Generally speaking, its epistemological roots are different. How so? Both consist of ideas and both offer a suggestion of how people can coexist. In Islam, I mean, this is a fascist, totalitarian and highly restrictive, absolute controlled way and method. In liberalism, it's the opposite. This has nothing to do with how we arrive at knowledge, epistemology. He seems to throw out random words to impress gullible, uncritical Muslims. You remember this, this Hamza Redbed, he always chucks out this scientific method. If, he, if he's lost, scientific method. <laughs> oh, so funny. Then the thing is, we're saying that Islam, the case for Islam is that it's an absolute truth. Sigh. This is laughable at best. It is childish, in my eyes quite stupid, to make such an assertion. No Muslim has ever been able to demonstrate anything verifiably correct in the Quran to me. Why is that? What about Islam is the truth? What about Islam would make it the truth? Please show me anything that is the truth. Now, short of a sculpture spelling out the word truth, I maintain he's unable to do so because the statement is nonsensical, without any sense. Well, sometimes with the word democracy comes pluralism and liberalism. No, what's he talking about? It's not about words, but ideas. And pluralism comes with democracy, yes, it's that easy. And no, liberalism does not automatically come with democracy. It's that easy. Oh boy. And now what follows is his attempt at explaining the election system in the UK. And it had me in stitches. It left me totally uninformed and wondering what on earth this had to do with Islam in the first place. And he tries somehow to discredit democracy and the different flavors and variations and fails miserably. Say 10% of the population or 15% of the population and say 15% of the population or 10%, 5% of the population voted for, the, uh, or 
which means that 15% of the votes amounts to, let's say, 40% of the... See, again, this is arbitrary, but that's the way it works. Does, does this make any sense for anyone? For me, it's total gibberish. Say, for example, you got 70% of people that vote on something, 30% of people that vote on another thing. The 30% is disregarded. The 70% is actually actualized. So it's not to do with what everyone wants. It's not, not, everyone is not equal. Do, do, do you see what I'm saying here? Or does that make no sense? Yeah, and that, that just about sums it up. The cross on a ballot sheet is worth more if you're rich, sure. Because now, all of a sudden, he contradicts everything he's just said and says that in Islam, it's the academic elite, and that's how it's done in the UK. What? He just said the opposite. And what is the Islamic elite? Who decides what makes up an elite Muslim? Is it the Muslim who is more deluded than others? Is it the Muslim who sincerely believes it is possible to revive a corpse using a stake? Is he at an advantage here? Why was the Islamic elite in Iran such a failure? Why are ISIS contributing to the demise of Islam when they were following those rules? Now, Hijab says that the what he calls people of that society, they pledge allegiance to a caliph. How? What if one person abstains? What if one person is currently on a Mars mission? Does that mean there's no caliph? Democracy and liberals is a useful system for people that don't have any objective moral basis. It's not useful if you know the truth. Now, just to make this clear, nobody, as far as I know, makes the claim that democracy is perfect. It's just the best we currently have. But it has major flaws, yes, just like people votes got us Brexit and Trump, so that doesn't work either. But democracy has no bearing on morality, not one bit, neither does liberalism. But in Islam, the doctrine does corrupt the moral standards of people, which is why Muslims today can't really handle their idol Muhammad as a prophet having sex with children and encouraging rape and slavery. Which means we live in a dangerous world where you think you live where there is a monopoly of ideas, but you actually have the amplification of the Western post-colonial narrative and the suppression of the rest of the ideas. In that world, it's hard to take yourself out. It's hard to pull yourself out of the white man's shoes. A monopoly of ideas, really? by the white man, <laughs> he's, he's incoherent, making absolutely no sense. But I must admit, this time around, he does get a few things right, like Plato's stance towards democracy, the origins are, but he sucks totally at explaining anything. There's no internal structure in his brain to be able to lead someone like step by step to understand something. So this entire section is just sort of white noise, stringing together some random words. He goes off into this, this, this preaching mode, delivering only incoherent and useless, nonsensical rambling, and that's it. Right? It's objective for those who believe it's objective. For us as Muslims, we have an objective outlook on Islam. We say it's true. Yeah, it's sheer desperation. And again, it's, it's useless. It's nonsensical. It just does not make sense. It's illogical. It's just presuppositionalism. And even his fanboys are really going to have a hard time finding anything useful here. And at the end of the day, he demonstrates, he shows that Islam simply does not belong into 21st century Europe. Okay, that's it. Thanks for your time. Thanks for your interest. If you like it, thumbs up. If not, thumbs down. But please tell me why. Thanks. See you again next video. Cheers.